Hey guys, just a quick check in. So I'm working on removing the intake manifold. Uh, so I'm taking off uh, the fuel injector wiring harness. Uh, obviously I've got the air filter and the uh, air bridge already taken off. Um, so like I said, I'm working on the intake manifold. So just a quick tip, if it's the first time you've taken off these fuel injector um, electrical connectors, there's a spring on the back that you press in and then you can just pull it off. Uh, and it may take two hands, one finger to, to press it in and then just pull it straight back. Uh, also watch, there's a little blue uh, kind of rectangular O-ring that sits down in here that seals, uh, keeps any water from getting in those electrical connectors. Sometimes that sticks to the top. Uh, make sure you don't drop any of those. They fit down into the connector. Uh, so you wanna make sure you keep those. Uh, another tip, obviously before you pull uh, the fuel rail off or disconnect the um, the fuel line coming in here, you want to release any fuel pressure that's still in, in the fuel rail. Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. You could pull the um, fuel pump uh, fuser relay and then crank the motor over and that'll run it out of fuel. Um, the other way, grab you a towel and on the end of this fuel rail, there's a Schrader valve. Uh, so just get a towel to cover the end of this and then tap the end of this with a um, small screwdriver. Be careful, it could be under pressure if you've recently driven the car. Uh, in my case, it's been sitting for several months, so most of the fuel pressure was gone anyway. Um, but that just releases any fuel pressure so that when you start taking any of these lines off, um, it minimizes how much fuel leaks out and you don't get sprayed. Uh, so just be careful. One other tip here. So there's this EVAP uh, canister here that connects to the back of the uh, throttle bar, I guess it's front of the uh, intake manifold and runs along here. You'll need to disconnect this line. Uh, it's very simple to come off. Come around to the back of it. Uh, you'll push the connector forward just a bit. And it slides right off and you can rotate it up. Okay. Very quickly, I'll show you how to disconnect the main fuel line uh, that comes in and feeds the uh, fuel rail over here on the driver's side. Uh, so there's a lock locking clip here uh, that you'll need to remove uh, before you can disconnect it. So just pry that off with a, a small flat head. You should be familiar with it, but there's a, um, use one of the fuel line quick disconnect tools. So that slides over like that. You'll slide it deep into the uh, connector and it's engaging a fuel, um, fuel line spring clip in there. So seat that good. There we go. So just make sure you got it seated all the way in there and then have a rag or something here to uh, catch any fuel that leaks out. And it's that easy. Okay, so I've got all of my fuel injector electrical connectors disconnected. I got the fuel line that comes in disconnected. Um, I got the air intake taken off. So at this point, uh, probably my next step will be to take out the intake manifold bolts. So you can see them, uh, they're eight millimeters and there's five on each side, so 10 total. Uh, I'll probably start with the two in the back since they're kind of under the cowl here. They'll be a little bit more difficult to get to um, and then I can zip the other ones out. Uh, at that point, I'll be able to lift the intake manifold up and slide it forward a bit. Uh, there may still be something connected back here. There's a bracket here um, and I can see an electrical connector on the back of it. So I have to see if that's something I can, uh, if this bracket will come off and they'll be disconnected or if it's something else I'll need to disconnect once I get the intake manifold up and uh, forward a little bit. But that's my next step. Uh, keep in mind, um, you may still have a stock throttle body uh, which has coolant lines that connect to it. So you'll, you'll have to disconnect those. Um, I've got an aftermarket uh, BBK um, 80 millimeter throttle body on mine uh, and I'm not running the coolant lines through the throttle body so I didn't have those. I've already disconnected um, the lines here, sorry about that, for the um, PCV system. Um, of course, if you've seen my video, I'm running the uh, Elite Engineering uh, catch can. So I pulled the, uh, the lines off of that because everything connects um, over here. And I made a point, I label everything. If I disconnect an electrical connector, I immediately label it with a piece of uh, blue painter's tape and label uh, what it is, especially with the wiring harness. Um, things seem obvious now, uh, but when you go to put things back together, um, 
it may not be quite so obvious. Uh, so having everything labeled makes it uh, kind of a plug and play experience to put things back together. Okay, so I got the intake manifold taken off. Um, I point out that this is the LS6 intake manifold. Uh, since my cars are 2001, typically from 01 and up, even the LS1 got the LS6 uh, intake manifold, which was worth a little bit of horsepower. Um, I'll point out a couple of things. So we're looking at the back of the intake manifold. Uh, there's a couple of things back here that you'll need to disconnect. So sometimes it's easier if you see it this way. Uh, this is your map sensor. So that's just a uh, connector um, that you pull loose. So this is not too hard to get to. Under here uh, is a rubber vacuum line. It's a little rubber elbow and then the vacuum line kind of dabs down towards the, the bell housing. Uh, you'll have to work with this a little bit. This actually held me up the most. Um, you just kind of have to twist it side to side a, a little bit and then you'll eventually just be able to pull it straight off. Um, so that needs to be disconnected. And then you have this large vacuum line. Um, this would be very difficult to get to because you'd have to get um, a pair of pliers back here to uh, disconnect this clip. Uh, so what I did, uh, the other end runs over to the uh, brake booster. So I disconnected it there uh, and that gives you enough slack and then as you pull this out you kind of have to snake this around because this uh, vacuum line is routed uh, between quite a number of things. So you just kind of have to uh, be careful with it and gently pull it out and you can snake this out with it. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, so the intake manifold bolts, the uh, two in the rear, um, <clears throat> it's under the cow a little bit so it's hard to you won't be able to lift these straight out uh, while the intake manifold is still on, on the car. Uh, so one trick, um, if they sit all the way down in there, they'll catch and you can't pull it forward. Uh, so you can do a number of things. I just use some of my painter's tape um, to wrap around the bolt to keep it uh, elevated since I couldn't pull it all the way out. This just keeps it lifted up so it doesn't hang up uh, on the bottom. I did the same thing with this uh, one over here. So these two rear ones just wrap a little painter's tape around it. Um, and that will keep them lifted up out of the way while you're pulling the manifold out. And once you get it out just a, a few inches, you can uh, pull those uh, bolts out. So anyway, this is just a rear look at the intake manifold and the things that have to be disconnected uh, before you can actually pull it off the car.